We're here for four or five stars in 2024. Like, I wish I had a free library. I can go dig in and get some of these books. Black cake's gotta go. I DNF my first book. I just wanted to get this video started because this video is going to be like an ultimate book video. I'm going to do a book haul that I've gotten either from Amazon, um, from that uh, local bookstore, Second and Charles. Um, and then I'm also going to do an unhaul because I, I want to start acting like I do with my clothes. So years and years and years ago, I think I saw it on an Oprah show or something. I don't know. But it was the best thing I ever heard when it comes to like cleaning out your closet and decluttering and things like that. Like the saying or whatever goes like, if you haven't worn something in like a year or two and it's still hanging in your closet on the same hanger in the same space, you need to donate it, get rid of it, give it to somebody you know, whatever. It just needs to leave your house to declutter. And so I feel like I wanna use that same philosophy on books. If I bought a book six months to a year ago, I probably not gonna read it and you know at the time when you're buying books you're like oh this sounds so good I want to read it and then you buy more books that sound oh so good I want to read it and then next thing you know you got a million books and you don't you don't want to read them no more so there's about eight eight or nine maybe like eight to ten actually um that I have that I want to unhaul I was just gonna take them and sell them back to second and Charles I'm sorry y'all my lips are so dry and I don't have my lip balm but, um I was gonna sell them I was either gonna sell them back to second and Charles but I went on my little neighborhood website to see if we had those free libraries because and a lot of people that I follow they always donate their books to free libraries so it just made me wonder like do we even have that where I live like in my neighborhood I would rather give it to my community so I went on my little um, neighborhood website to see if they had them and people responded so far and told me like what blocks what streets that they're on so I'm out and about and um, I'm on my way back. I'm gonna ride past a couple of them and see because tomorrow I'll probably go out and donate them. If they look like some somewhere that I want to donate these books to or I might just sell them back, you know, but there's nothing better than like giving. So if I sell them back, I'm getting money for it, which is not a lot of money, probably like enough for one book, <laughs> one used book at that. They don't even give you a lot. We want to share the love of reading with everybody. So People might want to read, like, I wish I had a free library. I can go dig in and get some of these books that I um, wasted my time reading because I would have felt better if it was free. So, I don't know. Whatever. I'm rambling. But, I'm a, what, mama? What? Is that a yarn? All right. <laughs> so, yeah. So, like I said, this is going to be an ultimate video, a book haul, a book unhaul. Um, I'm going to show you at some point at the end of the month because it's kind of like almost the end of the month today's the 20th today i'm probably not gonna post this until next week sometime so i need to see what else i'm gonna read for like the next week or two a week or so and then um i'll do a march wrap up too so this is probably gonna be broken up in different parts but all right y'all see y'all in a little bit okay so i gathered all of the books that i feel like i'm not gonna read first off don't y'all be trying to <laughs> make me keep these books in the comments saying oh so good they probably are good but you know what i have a million books up there and those are the ones i really 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 want to read and these are just kind of like me so okay first book i have is blood sugar i kept seeing this book on the kindle and i was like this looks so good this looks so good but it wasn't free and then i caught it on amazon or something and i got it um i'm not even gonna read the back of all these because it's gonna make this too long but blood sugar is one that i want to get rid of I know everybody talks about this book, A Good Girl's Guide to Murder. I hear that it is so good, but I just haven't picked it up. And I literally have had this book. I don't know. I think it was hot outside when I got it and it's about to be spring now. So we've gone through like two, two and a half seasons and I, I haven't read it. I just feel like I'm not going to read it. Next one I have is, I believe you say this, Jojo Moyes. Is that how I say it, Moyes? Um, Me Before You. I heard this is a super sweet story. I heard that it's like heartfelt pull at your heartstrings um but again i haven't gotten to it so i don't know i'm gonna let it go for now i'm gonna really get some hate for this but by the reviews half of y'all are gonna be like i feel you and then the other half is gonna be like oh no it was the best read ever black cake y'all i have tried to read this at least three times 
I'll start reading it and I get like the first two chapters and I just, I feel like this is going to be impactful. I feel like it's going to teach me things. I feel like it's going to take me to a whole nother place, but I just can't get into it. I haven't even tried to watch the uh, Hulu series because I don't like to watch the series if I have the book until I've read the book because uh, obviously the book is always better, they say. But I don't know, maybe once I actually get this out of my house and out of my hands, I'll watch the show and then I might regret it. But then after I watch the show, I won't need to read the book, but Black Cake's gotta go. Then I have the Seven and a Half Deaths of Evelyn Hardcastle. The premise of this story sounds really, really good. I hear that it's really, really good, but I just cannot get into it. It looks like it's gonna confuse me and not even like that good confused. This looks like it's literally gonna alter my brain chemistry. Like I don't, I don't know. I just, I can't do it right now. Um, wrong Place, Wrong Time by Jillian McAllister. Um, I had a friend that read this. She, she thought it was okay, but like we're not here for okay. <laughs> we're here for four and five stars in 2024. And I might think it's a five star and I might be missing out, but I don't know. I just, I'm not feeling it. They gotta go. Um, I have 13 Reasons Why by Jay Asher. I remember this being on Netflix and I watched like the first episode. No, I never completed the first episode because I kept falling asleep. So this was a while ago that this was on Netflix and I don't know. I feel like if I kept falling asleep on the show, I'm definitely, I don't know. I, I don't want it. <laughs> Point blank, I don't want it. Meet Me at the Lake by Carly Fortune. I read Every Summer After by her and I enjoyed it, but like they said, it was very, very similar to um, Love in Other Words, which which I saw a lot of the similarities. And I don't know, this, uh, she just didn't grab me with um, Every Summer After. So if she didn't grab me the first time, not to say that all of her books won't grab me, but I don't know, I, I don't know. Meet me at the lake. Then we have The Grace Year. I got this like some bargain buy. This book was probably like $3, $2, something like that, $5, less than five, I know that. I'm just not feeling it right now. Like we all, a lot of us are, are like mood readers. Um, I think I'd have to be in the mood to read these type of reads and I don't feel that mood right now. <laughs> and it's right now, tomorrow I'll be like, dang, why did I give the grace year away? I heard this is really good, but I just can't do it. So these are all the books that I plan on either giving to um, Second and Charles or to the free libraries. Yesterday on my way home, I um, I rode past a few of them. A couple of them were cute and I heard about this little place. It was an old school in my neighborhood that they transformed into um, like there's multiple shops in this old school. And I hear that they, they let you donate free books. So I don't know, um, the one little library that I went to um, it had a lot of, it had, at the time I went yesterday, I don't know if they're there now, but they had like Taylor, Taylor Jenkins Reid books. They had um, Colleen Hoover books. So they had like some, some popular books. So it looks like one that um, people frequent. So I, I do want to go to one that I know will get used and these books won't just get like wear and tear from the weather. So I might put half of those in that one because it wasn't a whole lot of room either. So I might put like half of these in that one and then maybe go check out that shop to see if I can um, take them there. Um, so I guess I'll take you with me when I go to um, to drop these off. Hopefully I can, cause I'm not good with multitasking, trying to record and like open a <laughs> free library and try to put the books in and try to not drop, you know, whatever. I, I'm clumsy, if you know me, I'm clumsy. If I touch it, it's falling baby. So, um, so yeah, so these are the books I'm giving away. Closed today because it is Wednesday. I've been reading this month this month was kind of like 
Yeah. I liked a lot of the books I read, but I, I didn't have any, like, I only had one that kind of made me say, like, oh, wow. Like, but the rest of them were, they were good books, but I didn't have a month like I've been having since this year started. I feel like January, bomb. February, bomb. Like, but this, not so much. I mean, it was okay. It was okay. I, I liked a lot of the books that I read, but I don't know. We're, and this is half the reason why. I DNF'd my first book. My first book. And I've never DNF'd a book. I've stopped reading one book, but I know I'm going to go back to it. I don't think I was in the right headspace to read that book at the time. I'm going to go back to it, but this one, I'm not going back to ever. This was The Wedding Date by Jasmine Guillory. I DNF'd it because it, the miscommunication trope is not my jam. Like, And that was full of it. Like literally, first 10 pages, I was like, I'm not doing this. So I toughed it out, toughed it out. 48% is as far as I can get because I'm just not going to do it. This year is supposed to be about me not pressuring myself to read books, not pressuring myself to keep pushing through. If I'm not enjoying it, I'm not reading it. So I try to pick books that I really feel like I'm going to enjoy so I don't have to be put in that predicament, but I put myself in it and <laughs> I DNF'd it. So that was my first and only DNF ever. Like I've never done that, but I'm gonna keep going and keep doing that if, if I get crappy books, you know? Anywho, so I read, let's see what I read. And again, no order, Mile High, Liz Tom Ford, um, this was the book I think in a previous video I said was a lot of controversy um, because the non-black author writing about a black author, um, they said that, uh, I hate when people say they say, like who is they? Um, they said that, you know, the way she was writing about a woman of color was kind of like disrespectful. The way she described her hair, like every two lines, she was saying something about her hair. And, you know, I just... Honestly, and I said I want to read this book because I want to know my exact words, what I said I think on the previous video, I want to know which side of the fence I was on. I'm on the side of the fence that loved the book. Like, I liked the book. Like, to the point where I've already gotten the right move because I liked it so much. So this is a hockey romance with, um, a Chicago, like, a made-up uh, Chicago hockey team. It follows Xanders. It follows Stevie. Stevie is the flight attendant on the team's plane. Um, she is a mixed race girl. She's a curvier girl. Um, she's got a lot of insecurities that she needs to get over. And Xanders is a playboy. He only dates the most beautiful women. He's got a new chick on his arm every game. Um, you know, he's that dude. So uh, the whole story is kind of, she doesn't even like him though. She thinks he's arrogant, that he's just a jerk because of like the way, the way he is. He's a womanizer. Um, so it's kind of good to see them form a friendship, relationship, in this and I just I'm just gonna say it like I did not see where the disrespect was in this book I just don't like and I'm not like a naive person like I, I see how the world works I know how the world works especially for us as women of color like or, or people of color period like I get it but I didn't see that in this I just didn't I've read books where I'm like well dang that was kind of rude or you know if it if it has something to do with anything else I, I can point out rudeness when I see it but I didn't see it I honestly didn't they kept referring to her hair it's like chestnut curls, but it wasn't overdone. They kept saying, well, they didn't keep saying. I think a few times it might be said that like she didn't wash her hair for a few days, which is what happens. Like we don't wash our hair every day. I could go two weeks and don't wash my hair and it'll be in that same little bun or ponytail for two weeks and then I wash it. So I didn't, I didn't see where the disrespect was. To me, it looked like she did do her homework to know we don't wash our hair every day. I don't know. It was just... I don't know, and untamable hair. Like if we wear our hair in its natural state, I know if I wear a twist out or if I wear a wash and go and you try to put a comb through that, all oh, the curls are gone. Like that is untamable. So I don't know, maybe she should have used different words so it wouldn't hit, hit a soft spot with some people. I don't know, but I just did not see the disrespect. I love the story and I'm gonna move on with this series. Then I have Block Shot, Kennedy Ryan's second book in the Hoop series. This follows Jared and Banner. They're both in the sports industry world. Um, they're it's enemies kind of enemies to lovers slash second chance romance they had a little stint of something when they were in college um, something happened they became enemies they end up working in the same field and they're crossing paths more and more and more and um, their relationships you know their relationship is um, mended in a way and they get over a lot of the things and it was kind of cute to see their um, love story kind of unfold I will say this is not this didn't live up to my standard for the hoop series I loved long shot but this one 
it just wasn't as good to me. I don't know if it's just like, I just wasn't invested in Jared. Like I didn't believe in their relationship. You know what I mean? Like the story was good. The storyline was good. I love how their professions made them kind of like, I love that, but I just didn't feel them. I felt like Banner was such a strong woman, strong in her career. You know, she had some insecurities she had to get over, but I feel like Jared just, just wasn't good enough for her. Honestly, I was rooting for another dude, but you know, I don't know, whatever. But hopefully Hookshot hooks me, hooks me. <laughs> hopefully Hookshot takes me back to the August and Iris feeling that I had when I first read this, but this is just one of my favorite, but is it good? Yes, it still was good. I still got through it in days um, and I'm still invested in the series. It just wasn't my favorite. Finley Donovan knocks him dead. I read Finley Donovan is killing it and I thought it was just such a different read it's a it's sp suspenseful it's a thriller it's um kind of comedy it has a little rom-com in there too um it was like everything in one and I really thought that was a different read for me I will say this did not hit me the way the first one did um because I think it was just the wow factor because I read something that had all of those elements all in one book and it was different for me at the time but I think going into the second one I knew what to expect so there were no like wow moments I knew what she was on if you don't know this follows um Finley Finley Donovan um she is a like I, I kind of want to say murder for hire but if you've read this, you know, it's it's not that, but it kind of is. But And the way she gets into this profession is just hilarious from the first one. So definitely read the first one before you read the second one or you kind of won't know what's going on. But if you just need a palate cleanser, something kind of funny, make you giggle every now and then, but it's still a suspense, grab this one. It's a good palate cleanser. And that's just what I used it for. I think I read this after I read The Wedding Date. <laughs> after I got so mad at that book, I just needed something that I wouldn't really have a feeling either way or another, just something to kind of get through. Then I read The Brutal Prince. This is a Chicago mafia romance, Irish family, Italian family. They're kind of like beefing, has been beefing for like centuries and centuries. It's just an ongoing battle with these two families. Um, the main, um, what's her name? Is it Ava? Ada. Ada sneaks into a party at their house, at the enemy's house, um, sets the house on fire. Um, all this chaos happens and then it ends up being a marriage of convenience between her and the um, oldest son of this family so it is just um it was different to read I don't think I ever read any books that had any kind of like mafia going on it wasn't any like real deal descriptive things about being in the mafia or anything like that but it was a cute read it was pretty spicy I love the um illustrations in the book it was it just added a cute touch to it um there's a playlist for this book and it said like on certain parts if you see where you know you see the illustrations if you see like music it makes it seem more dramatic and in it, and it did like for one part i did find the song and i was reading along but sometimes um it distracts me you know when you know i'm hearing music that i don't know sometimes it's distracting sometimes it's not but brutal prince this was a really good one and i um uh i already put on my tbr i didn't buy it or anything the stolen air that's the second one in this series just because i did like this so much and i think it's a lot of people in these stories and I think each book kind of follows one of those characters in it. And I can't even remember right now what the stolen air, who the stolen air is written about, who that follows. I really can't remember, but, um, yeah. So first line wins was my last one of the month, um, that I've read so far. Um, this was all over TikTok, book talk, wherever you want to look, Goodreads, whatever, everybody was reading it. So I got it like shortly after it was released, I got it at Target and um, I just picked it up just because everybody was talking about it. I had no idea when I was going to read it. But like I said, I was having such a, like a mid-month with these books that um, I just kind of wanted a good thriller. And oh my God, this was a good thriller. If you're thinking about it, go get it. This follows Evie Porter. Um, she works for a mysterious like um, Mr. Smith is what his name is. Um, she goes on all these jobs and she has all these different aliases. So it goes from past and present point of view Present is the current job she's on. All the past um, chapters are all the different um, aliases and the jobs that she has. So Mr. Smith sends her on a job. She she fulfills that job and she moves on to the next job, whether it's theft, whether it's um, usually it's like a theft type of deal or like getting in, getting some dirt on somebody to be able to come out and ruin that person. Like it's all these different jobs she had. I will say this. If you read this book, I wish I would have done it. So I'm just going to give a little advice. I think when you get to the past chapters that you should tab it, dog ear it, do what you need to do, because by the end of the book, 
like the way things are being talked about. She had so many jobs that you read about that me personally, maybe it won't happen to you, but like I kind of forgot what that job was when she was that name, if that makes sense. So I would just tab the past chapters. It may help you, it may not. You might be totally fine reading it, but sometimes I'm a little slow and <laughs> I can't follow things. So I wish I would have done that. But I just, honestly, I just flipped through until I got to that job that she was on and then it all made sense and I was okay with it. So um, this is definitely a good one. I would definitely recommend to anyone. This is definitely good. Right now I'm in, I'm reading uh, Twisted Hate, the third book in the Twisted series that follows Josh and Jules. I'm loving this so far. In this series, it seems like the way I heard it is that they get longer and longer with each book. They get um, spicier and spicier with each book. And from what I've heard, that is definitely true from what I'm reading. Um, I'm a little farther than this because the last I was reading was on my Kindle. So I'm probably like 50 or 60 percent in now. Um, I'm loving it. Like the same way I love the other ones right now. Twisted, the second one, whatever that one was, Twisted Games, the one with Bridget and Rice. Right now, that's still my favorite one. So I don't know if something's going to happen, but like this is an enemies to lover story. So right now they're just, just not getting over that enemy, enemy mark. So they haven't even like gotten down and dirty yet. So, well, they gotten down and dirty, but not like in the relationship. So I still got a ways to go with this one, but so far so good. Um, earlier when I thought I was recording this video, I wasn't. So I was doing my unhauling and you see these are already empty because I already did the unhauling, but my camera wasn't on. So <laughs> you just get to see the books that I got. So first I have Robbie Renee, Somebody's Wife. Um, I saw this circulating a few places, but not that many places. And I saw it was like a really thin book. I honestly don't really know what it's about. I just know there's a cheating trope. There's a couple, she's going to cheat. Um, and um, I don't know what happens. <laughs> I don't know if, I honestly don't like, but it seems like it would be good. I'll read a little bit of it. Gemma had me at hello, but she was somebody's wife. Dr. Ezekiel Green is ready to make a fresh start in a new city after the, after the divorce from his high school sweetheart. What was supposed to be a professional business dinner with a future colleague quickly transformed into a love at first sight encounter, or so he thought. Dr. Gemma Holiday was spirited, brilliant, beautiful, and another man's wife. Doesn't he know I'm somebody's wife? Does he care? Shit, do I care? That alone. So I don't know. I don't know if I'm gonna read this anytime soon because I don't, I've never read a cheating trope and I don't know if I'm gonna like it. So this is just kind of short. It's just kind of gonna be there for when I just need something to kind of go through. You know, when I'm not like sold on a certain book and I just need to read something, I bought that for that purpose. Then I have, like I told you, The Right Move. This follows Ryan and Indy. Ryan and Ryan is a professional basketball player for a fictional um, Chicago sports team. Ryan is the brother of Stevie in the first one, and Indy is the best friend of Stevie in the first one. The way the first one ends, it not no spoiler, but Indy ends up moving in um, with the brother. So they kind of set it up for this book. And honestly, if you read the back, you can kind of see that's where it went anyway. So I didn't spoil anything, but can't wait to get back into this sports world. Then I have um, Behind the Scenes by Christina C. Jones. Um, people say that this book kind of remind them of Real, if you've read Real by Kennedy Ryan, um, but with a lot of changes to it. So I think it gives you that type of vibe. Um, I'm not even gonna read all this, this is a lot, but Christina C. Jones is who wrote Love Notes that I talked about in a previous video. And I really love that book. And I've read a um, novella by her, I Think I Might Love You, and I really liked her writing. So she's still an author that I'm just gonna kind of buy book by book by book just to make sure like all of her writing is the same and it still grabs me the same way. Um, it's not like I just wanna buy a ton of her books and read them all right now. I'm just going slow with her and um, I love this cover. But um, yeah, so those are the books I got. I also have um, two books I got a couple of weeks ago. They're upstairs, they're already like, I just got them at the store. Um, I got June 1st by Jennifer Hartman, the author that wrote Still Beating in Lotus. Um, and I also got Binding 13. I can't even remember that author's name right now um, just cause that book is trending. But it's going to be a minute before I read that book because that book is really long and the font is so small. And I just, I don't feel like struggling right now. That's like a read outside book where the sun is like, I, I don't know. I just don't feel like I'm going to get to that book right now anytime soon. But I do have it because I do want to read it. I'm just not, I know I want to read Magnolia Parks. I know all the books that I like kind of want to read, they're so thick and long. So I need to save that for when I'm in the mood for like a longer book. But that is all. That is my March wrap up. That is my little mini book haul. Um... I just want to say thank you to everybody. Um, I have surpassed a thousand subscribers. Um, I started this back in August and I really just did it because my husband kept hounding me. 
he kept saying like, you know, you watch all these YouTube reviews all day. You watch all these videos. You're always on something looking up a review before you buy the book. You read all these books all day. You should just start a channel. And I'm like, I'm not starting a channel. I don't nobody looking at me. Um, Because I'm kind of like, I'm kind of... I'm like, I tell people I'm the most extroverted introvert you'll probably ever meet. Like, I love people. I love to be entertaining and, and you know, stuff like that. But at the same time, I kind of just don't want to talk to people. I just want to sit in my corner and read my book. So I was like, I'm not starting a channel. But over time, I was like, well, why not? Because I don't have a lot of book friends. You know, I have like a handful of book friends and really like one main book friend. So, um... I'm like, why not? And I feel like I've made so many friends in this community. Everybody's so nice. The encouragement, the comments, things like that. Like, I just, it feels like we really all know each other. I think it's just cute. So I'm going to keep doing this because it's fun. Like I always say, it's fun. So again, I appreciate you guys for subscribing and caring about anything I have to say. I ramble all the time, but you guys seem to like it. So thank you so much. And I will see you guys on the next video. Mm -hmm.